Good morning. Uh, welcome to Frank's School, the 131st day of the fifth year, first video. Uh, Portugal and the Alps. Here is a prequel number one. Uh, I explained that I'm going to take my time with this, but I'll be brief about this. <clears throat> the first time <clears throat> that I uh, went to Europe, I, I entered Europe via Africa. I rather think that my dear friend Wayne Frost did the same thing. I, th I think the first time he was in Europe, well, I can't say it was the first time, but 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 he was in, in Lisbon and I, uh, he was also in Africa. Well, in any case, it was in the year 1967. I had that wrong. I think I had 1968 down when I talked about this before. It was at the, uh, the summer after my junior year in college. Uh, I was 21 years old. Uh, this is 49 years ago. So, so you know, I, I'm a little surprised how detail, uh, how much I remember uh, of certain details. Well, I had been in Bignona, Senegal, and that, that's in the very western part. Bignona would be down here. Uh, Senegal is right here in the very western part of, uh, of Africa. As a matter of fact, I think I was on the westernmost point of Africa. I'm pretty quite sure I was. Uh, and uh, I'd been there for two months, uh, and uh, I was staying with two other peace, two Peace Corps volunteers. I was a trainee. The language was French. My French didn't get too good that summer because we spoke English all the time with the two, Bill and, and Tom. Uh, what our job was to do was to go around and, and help, or else actually do it, put concrete lids on deep holes which served as latrines for the Africans to discourage them from just going to the bathroom out in the weeds and stuff. I, I, I often thought, I'm not sure how good an idea that really was, but I don't want to go into great detail about this. The, the thing about that, that was the first time I'd ever gone, got into the tropics. Uh, and uh, I, I should have said clouds. The two things that I remember so clearly were the rice paddies, the beauty of seeing rice paddies with women and their babies on their backs bent over and, and, and planting the, the rice uh, that had been uh, grown as like in a nursery. Uh, I was there. Now we were, we, we had the fear of the Lord put in us about going into those rice paddies because of a disease called schistosomiasis that, that it could go in through your skin and, and uh, so, but uh, they were beautiful, and the clouds. Uh, I don't think I ever saw clouds like that, where you could look straight up tens of thousands of feet. I think uh, that was the birthplace of, of hurricanes. Uh, it was in the summer, you know, in a rainy season. That's the other thing, too. It was, it was the rainy season. There was a rainy season, dry season. Well, anyway, Casamance, uh, the, in the Casamance down here, that's where Bignone is in Senegal. At the end of that uh, summer, or at two months, I had a ticket back to Boston. Uh, and what we all basically did, I think we had about two weeks to get to Boston. And uh, we all sort of bent the ticket and, and routed it through Europe, at least most of us did. Anyway, I flew then to Morocco, uh, Ca Casa, Casa, uh, Casablanca, and then uh, I just don't recall how I got to Rabat where I knew somebody. He was a foreign exchange student uh, briefly with my parents. His name was uh, Abdeltif Seca, and he worked in the Banque du, du Maroc uh, in, uh, in, in Rabat. Anyway, I, I found him, and, uh, and with him and his wife, we, we drove to see Fez, uh, the interior city of Fez. We were very memorable. I, I don't want to at this point, I don't want to describe in great detail all this stuff that I saw, but, but you know, because it's, this is my principal subject. I had a traveling companion for part of this time. Uh, anyway, from, uh, and I'll say more about her, uh, we traveled, uh, I then flew to Lisbon. I had had a chance to go to Hungary, and uh, I rejected it. There was a, a different woman, or may. No, it was a different woman, that a uh, Peace Corps trainee, that wanted to visit uh, relatives in Hungary. And, and I often thought, boy, maybe I made a mistake. It, this was behind the Iron Curtain at the time. I don't know how easy it would have been to do it, but she had invited me to go along, and I thought, boy, that would have been something to see. But I, I rejected it.
anyway, we flew into Lisbon. Uh, in Lisbon, uh, and there was my first entry into Europe, my first time to Europe. In, in Lisbon, uh, I don't remember too much about the details of that day other than loving it. The, uh, I, I just thought Lisbon was a really cool city. I spoke no Portuguese, uh, and uh, uh, I think I might have gone to the zoo, of course, uh, the Castel de San Jorge, the, the St. George's Castle, I'm sure, or, yeah, well, I know, I remember that, and the, probably the Elevador Santa Justa, the, the elevator probably did that, and I think maybe that was when I went to the zoo. Oh, I, I had this up here. I should back up. Now, b this was not the first time I'd been out of the country. Uh, I had spent a day with my father, a day or maybe two in Montreal, once Canada, and uh, the summer of 1966, I went hitchhiking around the United States. Uh, I kept a journal when I did that called Summer School. Um, that was some, I had wanted to get all the way to Canada, or uh, to Alaska, but they turned me back at the uh, uh, Can Canadian-Washington uh, state border because I, I didn't have a good enough plan, didn't have enough money. I thought, ah, I'll just come back. That was, you know, but, you know, at the time, it was almost a thing to do. Uh, Thomas Hawking is about five years younger than me, a uh, German. And he did something similar in Europe when, uh, when he was uh, around that early 70s. So it was kind of a thing to do at the time. Plus, when you're young, you, you want to, often you want to go out there and see, well, what's out there? What's out there in the world? Uh, and in, in uh, the old times, uh, Middle Ages, I think there was a, or I don't know when it stopped, there was even something in German called the Wanderjahr, the wander year, the year that you wander as part of your education uh, at a certain point. So, you know, I had that, that impulse to see, well, what's, what's out there? But that, that had been before. Um, all right, from uh, Portugal, uh, from, uh, from Lisbon, specifically Lisbon. I'm not even so sure we got out the Sintra. Probably not. I probably did see the, oh, I'm quite sure I saw the, uh, uh, the gardens and the, and the, uh, oh, uh, St. Geronimo uh, convent in uh, convent monastery in uh, Belém. But anyway, we flew to Madrid. Uh, Madrid. Madrid. Um, the only thing I remember clearly about Madrid was I went to the Prado, that, that real famous museum, and I liked it. I was impressed. From Madrid, we flew to, uh, to uh, Paris. These were just stops, just like one day in each one. To Paris, we did not, and from Paris straight back to Boston. I'm, I'm quite sure we didn't go to, to London that time. Now, why I'm taking you, uh, I say Boston, but it was Cambridge. I was attending Harvard then. Uh, why I'm telling you about this really is Portugal and the Alps. So what it really has to do, it's a little bit of background of my own travels. But that first time to Lisbon, speaking no English, uh, <laughs> Portuguese, uh, I bonded with it. Uh, and and I, uh, I think it's a fine way to initiate travel to Europe. Uh, I did see these other two big cities, and they, they were okay. But that, that for, for being a city, I, I like that one. All right. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, prequel number one is over. Bye for now.